I don't believe that there is moral casual sex because I don't think sex is casual. I don't think anything about it is casual. I don't think there's any such thing as a casual sexual relationship. I don't believe that. I've never seen any evidence that that's the case. I think that there are people rationalize that constantly because they want to believe while well, they want to believe that short-term hedonistic gratification is ethically acceptable. And I don't think it is. I think that it trains you to treat yourself and other people as instrumental objects of short-term pleasure, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, is that is that how you want to train yourself? How's that going to work in your... You're going to have a long-term relationship at some point? How are you going to train yourself for that? Okay, so having said that, and then, you know, how carefully, how carefully should we conduct ourselves in sexual matters? I would say, well, as carefully as you conduct yourself in any matter of importance. And that might be, that stretches all the way up to the top, whatever the top is. You know, you're going to treat the other person as if they're a divine locus of consciousness or a disposable pornographic entity. Well, you know, those are the, those are the borders. Okay, but then you say, well, you have to practice. And there's truth in that. And how do you practice? And the answer is, well, that's one of the central complications of life, right? To, to get the balance between individual action and the whole domain of sexuality and reproduction right is perhaps there's no more difficult question especially once you've solved the question of do you have enough to eat tomorrow mm -hmm. that'd be the next one that pops up mm -hmm. but i don't think there's ca i don't think there is such a thing as casual sex i think that's indistinguishable from masturbation which i also don't regard as a particularly heroic act and so well T-shirts, masturbation, right. not a particularly well, yeah, right, <laughs> right, heroic right. act. Right, and, right, and I think people have that sense, and I don't think that that's culturally instantiated, because in some sense we've done everything we can to eradicate every last vestige of sexual shame, which I think in the final analysis is impossible, because there are all sorts of reasons for the persistence of sexual shame that have nothing to do with cultural context. And still, you know, it's an... A furtive and underground activity and the reason for that is because it's suboptimal for all sorts of reasons well how much motivation does a young man need to overcome his fear of rejection and establish a relationship with a woman and the answer to that is we don't know but sexual deprivation could easily easily be part of it because you, to do something difficult you need a lot of motivation you need frustration working for you. You need fear working for you. You need lust working for you. You need loneliness working for you. To bind a man and woman together, especially if they're going to produce children, this is a very, very difficult thing to do successfully. And so anything that interferes with that is to be viewed with extreme skepticism. And that's undoubtedly part of the reason that shame around hedonistic sexual activities remains a constant despite our best attempts to eradicate it. I think I would also say, um, just from my experience growing up, especially in university, it's not like, like it's seen on the outside having casual sexual relationships as this fun thing. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. No. And nobody thinks it's fun, especially women. So if you're around other girls and they're like, oh yeah, I hooked up with this guy, yeah. none of you guys are actually enjoying that, yeah. right? And I think yeah. that's a lie that women tell each other. Yeah. Um, Why? I think because they think other people don't care. And because if you do it, it makes you feel bad enough that you're like, well, I don't wanna look at that. Whatever's going on there, like maybe me feeling bad is not healthy. Right. Like I'm not, sh and it means it's, there's it's something bad. wrong with it's, you. Yeah, or there's something wrong with you, right? right? And right. so it's like, and it's unpleasant enough that you're like, well, I'll just, you know, keep going. It's already happened. There's nothing yeah. I can do about it. So it might as well be okay because what am I going to do about uh, what am I going to do about it if it's not okay? Yeah. So and then, you know, and I think this is pretty common for women in university to hook up with people, right? It's called hookup culture. 
there's tinder like it, it happens but i like for anybody out there who's who's thinking maybe i don't want to do that it's not fun it doesn't yeah, make well, you feel of, good it's really makes you really lonely right it's not yeah, a good why idea do you think it makes you lonely i think because what you're looking for what you're looking for is, is... a connection with somebody and, and you're, so what you're getting this what physical is... connection and you're not getting any emotional connection and it's Right, and then there's it's, the contradiction. There's this oh, yeah. it's a terrible contradiction. Yeah, and right? it's well. Here's yeah. here's an interesting thing I used to tell my clients: is don't do anything with anyone sexually that you wouldn't talk to them about. Seems it's like well, I wouldn't talk to anybody about that. It's like, but, but you'll act it, it out. Yeah, eh? yeah. So th that's worth thinking about. So you're not intimate enough with them to have a conscious discussion. But you're perfectly willing to blunder stupidly into it, mm -hmm. and then and then risk the aftermath. A lot of that's fueled by alcohol too. Yeah, like a, a lot, lot of it is fueled, yeah. like all of it. Yeah. You're not going to do yeah. that. If we ever sober. Had a, wanted to have a serious conversation about sexual impropriety on campuses, for example, the first thing we'd focus on is alcohol. But we don't want to have a serious conversation about that because you know we don't want to yeah. have. Well, we don't want to have chaperoned parties like there were in the 1950s, you know. It's like, well, you know, having some older people around to keep the or the drunken orgy under control actually turns out not to be such a bad idea. Especially people who um, are non-biased, right? Are unbiased. We're just there saying, well, this doesn't look like it's going well. Maybe I'll help this person out. Yeah, well, it's, instead of a group of friends, they're like, "No, do it!" Like, yeah, right. Well, which is exactly <laughs> a bunch of what, doorknobs running right. into each other. Well, that's yeah. what you get with alcohol too. Alcohol is a drug that really radically decreases people's medium to long term orientation. Right? It really focuses you on the present, which makes it, if it's a good drug for you, it makes it unbelievably fun because it decreases anxiety mm -hmm. and it increases. Likely opiate bonding and dopamine mediated extroversion. And so, like, it's cocaine, heroin, and a benzodiazepine rolled into one. And so, it makes you not care. And for, for pure hedonism, there's nothing better than not caring. Yeah. But alcohol is a catastrophe on many fronts because of that. And a huge proportion of violent crimes, exploitative crimes, rapes, a huge yeah. proportion of those are conducted between drunk people and so but i don't i don't believe that i don't believe that there is moral casual sex because i don't think sex is casual i don't think anything about it is casual